Imagine there is a farmer with a very deep well on his land, and some guy wanders onto his land and falls down the well. Is the farmer at fault? I don't think he should be, but you can at least make an argument that he holds some culpability. Now let's imagine that around the well is a sign that says, Danger! Deep well! However culpable the farmer is, he should be a little less culpable, having warned people of the danger. Let's go further. What if he added a giant wall topped with barbed wire, which itself had warning signs, and then beyond the wall was another wall, and then after that wall was a warning sign for everything after it. If some stranger manages to fall down the well after that, then I think we can conclude that they are not doing so out of innocent ignorance, but because they ignored all warnings and deliberately trespassed, presenting a potential danger to the farmer. If they in the process are harmed, then I believe they are entirely culpable. If you find some stranger in your house in the middle of the night, we don't assume they have merely innocently wandered in while skipping through the fields. The onus on the occupant cannot be to assume that, Otherwise, self-defence and defence of home and property would be nullified, and criminals would be incentivized to burgle freely. So we can derive the principle behind castle doctrine with this thought experiment. Similarly, national borders are not supposed to be entirely safe spaces. They delineate the boundaries of nation-states. So, if someone gets hurt trying to scale a giant wall with barbed wire on the top, they are most certainly not innocent in their criminal endeavour and any harm done to them should be looked upon as being provoked by their actions. Strictly speaking, as mentioned in other videos, as long as it was well signposted, I don't see what would be wrong with having a border with minefields and auto turrets, although that's a very extreme and lurid hypothetical. Are there innocents harmed by border security? Oh yeah, and I have sympathy for them. And it is possible to reform things in a way that would help alleviate harm while upholding the principle. But... In any case, the innocents here are the children being dragged along for the ride by reckless parents, who will be wise to obey procedure instead of trying to storm the boundaries of a state's authority and break in. And yes, that still holds true, even if they're trying to gain asylum. People can't be allowed to traipse across the land into any territory they like, and then if you stop them, you are the bad guy because you're initiating violence. When you're talking about someone's personal property, it's a little more clear-cut and obvious, to be fair, or at least intuitive, since if we reverse the culpability for harm here, then anyone could just go into anyone's house and be a potential threat or thief without any preemptive barriers being allowed. For a nation-state, it's about institutional incentives. If anyone can just go and be a citizen of any country with no vetting whatsoever, then the First World will be swamped and destroyed. You can bet on that. In 2015, during the migrant crisis, Merkel decided to relax border control, and up to 1 million migrants streamed in before security was tightened again. If we had total open borders all the time, it would be that on an even more colossal scale. That's where slogans like undocumented migrants and no one is legal lead, if taken seriously. Sure we can reform when it comes to specifics of how processing is handled in various countries, but you can't call for reform while using the language of abolition. Also, if any progressive political actor claims to not be for open borders, but then there's no actual version of enforcement they can support or propose, then the effect is de facto open borders anyway. The real problem is that you can have enforcement chugging along in the background most of the time, but when you have the unusual cases that get media attention, where you have massive waves all coming in at once, there are going to be some people harmed, some sad stories that could have been avoided. That doesn't mean we make an exception, because that just means a race to the bottom, and whoever has the saddest story wins. Especially not during a situation where strong enforcement is needed the most. If you don't want to be shredded by barbed wire, or fall off a wall, then go through the legal process. Morality exists to serve an institutional purpose that will allow society to persist and uphold itself. In this case, if you insist on invading a territory, then it doesn't matter how peacefully you appear to be doing so. And it doesn't matter if you hold babies in front of your face. You are the one culpable for what might happen, or at least overwhelmingly. If there's some blame that can be shared for excessive and disproportionate uses of force, we can have that argument. But we should only do so under the understanding that while police brutality, 
or brutality by security forces is to be avoided, criminality cannot be bubble-wrapped and made into a perfectly safe endeavour. You're a criminal, and at some point someone is going to have to tackle you. Woe be it if you get scuffed.